Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Coming to you live every Tuesday at 12. Spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today we have joining us owner of Greens Masters Lawn and Pet Service, Scott Ateo. Scott's on to join us today to talk about pest control. Now you may be thinking, well, we're heading into winter, Tracy, and I don't really need to worry about that with the season coming up. But Scott is on to join us to tell us that that's not the case. There are things that we can be doing to our homes now, this fall, to prepare for both winter and next spring when it comes to pests. Without further ado, let's get Scott on to join us. There he is. Hello. Hi, Scott. How are you? Good. How are you doing? (laughs) Good. Good. All right. We got connected. So today we had you on a few weeks ago and we were talking about how to properly seed our lawns for the fall. So if anybody missed that episode, you'll want to go back and check out August 9th. Um, But today you're on to talk about pest control. And like I said in the intro, we might think like, well, we're heading into winter. The pests are all going to die. You know, what do I need to worry about the pests now? But you're here to let us know that's not the case. And there are things that we can be doing now to prepare our homes for the winter and the spring ahead. That's right. Yeah. And and like you said, they're not going to die. And anybody that's had a pest problem over the winter, whether it's insects or mice, knows for a fact they don't die. They just move someplace warmer. And that's always going to be your house, your, your garage. Anywhere where they can get in that's sheltered from the winter. Okay. Um, that includes all types of insects and all types of small rodents too. Okay. So winter just means they're going to come closer, <laughs> closer. Ooh, Instead right. of just being out on our patio or around our house, they're going to be looking for ways in. So what, what type of, now when you say pests, like what are you referring to? So that would be anything that's unwanted in the house, which generally includes the insects and it includes different types of rodents uh, from from just regular house mice all the way through ground squirrels or even raccoons, per se. Um, if you have an opening big enough for one of those to get in, you have a big problem there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you also have, for overwintering insects, you have anything from carpenter ants to Asian lady beetles, uh, kissing bugs, stink bugs, and the dreaded box elder beetle, which ha- happens to be a really big problem in Michigan now. They're constantly hashing behind the uh, siding joints and uh, inside uh, brick areas that have a little bit of mortar damage, and they go for the warmest area and they end up inside the house and sometimes it can be everywhere oh. they're a real nuisance they don't cause any harm other than just being a real nuisance when you're sitting around trying to watch tv at night right. and <laughs> landing on it yeah. it's not fun <laughs> yeah you don't want them in your house so if you don't want any no. unwanted house guests this winter then what are some of the things that we should be doing right now well, first, you need to identify any areas that are weak where insects or small rodents can get in. So in the case of insects, um, you're looking for areas where caulk is breaking down around windows or doorways. You're also looking for unpainted wood that needs to be repainted because any that allows decay in, which will allow carpenter ants to get a foothold or carpenter bees, one of the two. Um, which means that they they can end up in the house over the winter too because it's still warm. Those right. those hives will be active as long as it's warm. Okay. Um, you're also looking for small holes for for rodents. Uh, a mouse can get in size of less than a dime for for wow. a small mouse. Wow. Really really tiny areas they can get in. Um, for you know for bigger stuff you're looking in garages are often especially detached garages i have one it's from the 1950s so <laughs> yes there's there's some openings yeah. and some gaps in areas where there shouldn't be right i'm um, filling those gaps is really key to keeping pests out for the most part okay um but for people that have done all this and they cannot identify any other areas with their where they're getting in in that case insecticides or rodenticides are needed okay Okay, so the first line is if you haven't done it yet, first go and check your home and your garage and and look for some of those areas and take care of them before the weather really starts to turn. That's right. So, and then yeah. if yeah. not, then the next line of defense would probably be to contact a professional such as yourself for some additional yeah. help. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Prevention yeah. really is key to insects, retarding insect um, damage and insect invasion, as well as rodents getting in the house. To just prevent them on the outside. If you're having trouble with that, there are different methods. Uh, some okay. some 
companies want to come inside the house if you have a current infestation. Um, sometimes that requires a professional to come inside the house if you're not willing to do the work yourself. And by the way, it is pretty easy for most insects. Good thorough cleaning for a couple of weeks straight will get rid of most insects, um, including mites and smaller crawling insects like that. Um, but if you're having flying things in the house, that means they're actually <laughs> inside the walls. Oh. And and prevention in that case requires, it really requires pesticide use on the exterior of the house okay. um, during the warmer parts of the year. Okay, so you're saying that even if there is an issue inside of the house, it can be treated from the exterior. That's correct. As long as it's warm enough to do so. Okay. Um, there are some, some really, really nice preventative sprays that, that can be applied to the exterior of a house to make sure that they cannot get in. Or if in the case of carpenter ants, even if you do have a nest on the inside, as long as it's been identified as having a nest inside the house, um, carpenter ants are predators, which means that they need a lot of insects to feed the hive. You don't should not have that many insects in the house. <laughs> they need to evacuate the house, come outside, cross through chemicals, come back to the nest. And for, for the proper chemicals to be used, you can usually get rid of a nest even if it's on the inside, from the outside without ever having to go inside within six to eight weeks. And then from there, you also need a professional to identify, well, what's going on? Where is where is the nest? Why is it here? Which is usually leaky pipes. Um, it's almost always in doorways, window. So with all of that, you want to identify what they're nesting in and try to fix those areas. And that will usually prevent most insects, just fixing the area that they're actually getting in. Okay. So as with the case with most things in life in general, it's finding the root cause and resolving right. that. And then you can always treat the, the issue or the result that came from that original problem. But you still want to make sure you're getting down to the root cause and, and taking care of that issue. Yeah, absolutely. And my whole goal with pest control really is just that. It's either prevention or in the case of something like carpenter ants, fixing the problem so that you don't need me anymore. I would really rather not spray specialized, very specialized chemicals on the outside or even on the inside of a house if I don't have to. Right. If there's already an existing problem, we need to take care of it. Once that problem is taken care of and the root cause is taken care of, you don't need me anymore. And that's actually my goal. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So if you have a problem, you definitely want to contact a professional such as Scott to get help. But there are steps, as he mentioned, that you can take um, prior to if you haven't had any issues, then, you know, maybe make that trip around your house and, and take a look for if there's peeling paint on the window frames or caulk missing or, um, you know, just seeing where you might have some exposures or entry to your home. Um, so. What, what else, Scott? Is there anything else that we should be doing or looking out for this fall? Well, you want to make sure that you don't have a chipmunk problem right now. If you've had a chipmunk problem throughout the year, they are definitely going to be looking for a way in if okay. you have not been able to get rid of them. Um, and this goes with prevention. Like I love chipmunks. They're cute. Yeah. But they're extraordinarily <laughs> Elvin, Simon, and Theodore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. They're, they're, they're great little creatures, unfortunately. Yeah. They're very, very playful and very, very destructive when they play. So you've got a massive chipmunk problem outside your house. You probably should be doing something about that right now. Um, okay. And this falls under prevention. You want to make sure that the rodents that are outside stay outside. Bait boxes work really well. Um, a professional bait box is locked okay. and secured so the poison can't exit, at least not without the rodent carrying it out. Um, and most bait boxes have security measures to even keep the rodent from carrying out any of the poison. Um, and really good poisons are actually, once they're digested, they cannot be passed on to another consumer. So okay. if you've got the house cat is not going to eat the mouse and then die because the mouse ate the poison. Okay. That's not how it works for, for the proper chemicals. There are chemicals out there, unfortunately, that are not good, but a good pest provider will put down the right stuff for you. Proper. Okay. Now, yep. now this may seem like a silly question, but will somebody know if they had a chipmunk problem? You know, if you see them yes. running around, you know, outside, but you would know already if they are a problem and how would somebody yeah. identify that? If you've been if you've been paying attention, if you've been outside in your flower beds, you will see the holes probably everywhere, and they probably ate a few of the flowers. Um, they're they're right now they're very very active storing nuts, um, trying to get 
everything done for the winter. Um, they don't hibernate, but they do sleep a lot more and they do need things to eat during the winter. So they're running around right now. Um, you'll know if you have, if you have a problem also, guess what? They love cars too. So if your car alarm is going off every night and you don't know why, it may very well, well be a ground squirrel or a chipmunk. They do love cars. The wires, unfortunately, are soy-based, um, which are edible. So wow. they, they love to chew on them. That's interesting. Who knew that our car wires were edible? Well, for, for right. at least for chipmunks, right? <laughs> yeah, so right. I guess that's motivation. So all my homeowners and my clients out there, the ones that you know leave their cars in the driveway and have a garage, Maybe this is some motivation to make some space for the car in the garage this winter. There you go. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anything else, Scott, that we should that we should know? I mean, these are some great tips, and I know I probably could do a little walk around my house and have a few areas to take care of. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. So the last the last thing with pest control, which we didn't we didn't touch on yet, is actually mosquitoes. And believe okay. it or not, they are still active this time. You're not as active. However, the mosquitoes that we have right now do not die. They okay. overwinter. They're going to hide under the leaves as they fall. They're going to hide behind bark. They're going to hide inside trees. Um, anywhere where they can hide successfully from the winter, they will hibernate. It's just like sticking a fly in a freezer. When when they defrost, they come back out. Really? Um, I also, did not know that. I'm learning yeah. so many new things today. <laughs> also, the mosquitoes that are, that are crossing over with birds right now, um, migratory birds are one of the biggest depositors of ski mosquitoes. Okay. So the ones that aren't already, already here, they're coming in for migratory birds. As they drop off, birds happen to be one of the biggest disease-carrying vectors. So as those mosquitoes feed on the birds, if, they, if that bird is diseased with anything, that mosquito carries a lot of the different diseases. As they overwinter, they pop back up in spring. Guess what? Their larvae is also affected. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why we get bad years of different diseases. If we have if we have a lot of migratory birds that have been infected, we also have bad years the next year okay. um, of diseases here in Michigan. So that can be anything from equine encephalitis to West Nile virus. Or just, you know, other little stuff that happens yeah. <laughs> happens to be mosquito yeah. related. So. Yeah, see, and, you know, um, here we, we tend to think that winter comes and it, you know, kind of kills everything off and we get to start fresh in spring, but that's not the case. Nope, absolutely not. No, <laughs> it's not. So right now we will be, our, my company will be doing one last mosquito control here in the next next uh, two to four weeks. We always make sure to do one in in uh, in, in October. Um, sometimes the very beginning of November if it's still really warm out. Um, but that is not meant necessarily because you're getting eight at that time because you shouldn't be, um, especially if you have a mosquito program provider. Um, but we want to make sure to greatly decrease the population going into next spring. Okay. And so a question: If somebody has not been doing any type of pest control or mosquito control treatments. <laughs> all you know throughout the season will doing this last treatment will that help for the spring if if somebody is concerned yes it will yes it will it will it will very very greatly cut down on the spring mosquitoes um it'll cut the population in half for probably a couple of weeks in spring until somebody can get out of out there when it's warm enough and start a proper proper program so you just want to lessen that and you also want to lessen the, the chance of disease vector spreading okay all right. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much once again for all of the the knowledge and information. I've learned a lot of things today regarding pests that I did not know and our cars. So, um, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate you coming on and joining us and we'll definitely have you back on the program again. Um, thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And we'll see you next Tuesday at 12 on Tea with Tracy. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, right, Tracy. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.